editing Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast episode 259, and I am doing it in Audacity audio version. I have already done the video version. You can check out our previous stream on that. And I am finishing off the audio version of the podcast in Audacity. I've already done the first 21 minutes. This is a shorter Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. There is no feedback section, and it is only 37 minutes at best here. Probably a little bit less, and then there will be outtakes afterwards. But I wanted to put this together for everybody wanting to know how I actually edited. So if you have questions, go ahead and look me up on Twitter at Stargate Pioneer or email me Stargate Pioneer at GunnaGeek.com. All right, we're going to pick up with the new section. I'm going to go ahead and double click. So select the entire section. And I noticed that I actually have the outro in there as well. So I'm going to select right there and I'm going to do a control I where I split the tracks control I will split the track and I'm going to move the new section in a little bit using the time shift tool I'm going to go back to the selection tool and I'm going to double tra double click that version that part that segment and I'm going to truncate silence I will do this by using alt T which is a shortcut create the shortcut once again you would go into the preferences under edit in this version of audacity at least go to keyboard type in truncate silence and then create your alt t you actually actually press alt t because this will be blank and then set it and okay and that is a shortcut which can be used for the rest of your time i use 0.85 seconds as the truncate silence um, it will truncate down to 0.85 seconds I think that's good for my podcast. Your podcast might be different. I have added silences in before. You can check out the previous stream on this podcast to see how I did that. All right, so there we go. Oh, let's back up. 11 minutes, 13 seconds of the segment. Once I do the truncated silence, it's down to 10 minutes, 13, 30 seconds, which is about 45 seconds worth of time saved to my listener. And it was about 1 minute 45 seconds for this segment. So all told, so far in a 37-minute podcast, I have saved my listener 2 minutes and 30 seconds, roughly. More than that if I take out crutch words. So I'm going to go ahead and cross fade in. And I'm going to do that by... Clicking the sync lock tracks. I'm going to take that off. So I'm only moving the tracks that are highlighted, which is just this portion of the segment right now. And I'm going to see how that sounds. I turn on my speakers. So that'll take 10 seconds to warm up. These are studio monitoring speakers because they have flat response. They're five inch JBL speakers, LSR 305s. So we hinted at this a little. It just worked out where I put it sounds about right for me. So I'm just going to keep it right there. So we hinted at this a little earlier when we were opening up this episode. Netflix has canceled Luke Cage. Let's see if I can take out that. So so is a crutch word. So shouldn't be used in an edited podcast if it can be avoided. I don't think I can avoid it right here because as you can see, the so weave is right in there. So we... 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 So... We... Yeah, I could take that out, but as I was explaining last time, this is a weak start to the word we. Normally, you want a big impact when you start speaking. The plosive that comes out of your mouth when you start speaking in any sentence, it's, it's quiet and ramps up. It's boom. It's right there. It's how many normal people speak. And if you just quiet and get in there, if you're attuned to the audio, you can pick that sort of stuff up. In this particular case, I'm not going to go ahead and take out the so because the trailing word is not impactful enough to start off a sentence. So we hinted at this a little earlier when we were opening up this episode. Netflix has canceled Luke Cage. Yeah, 
according to sources, Netflix was not particularly impressed. I'm going to take out the yeah. That's just an affirmation. It doesn't need to be there. I'm going to turn back on sync tracks so that uh, everything is shifted to the left accordingly. It shouldn't matter in this particular case. There's nothing to the right except for this one track, but I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway. It's good practice. Keep in practice of it. Now, the affirmation, you could keep it in there. In this particular case, I'm going to take it out. I don't think it's giving the listener anything. Now, this is the first rule of improv, right? And a lot of these podcasts are basically improv in a structured manner. And the yes and, which is the first rule of improv, I'm not improv trained, but I know the yes and rule. So the affirmative there is is good. It keeps things rolling in the right direction, but I don't think it's necessary. So I took it out. Episode, Netflix has canceled Book Cage. According to sources... Netflix was not particularly impressed with the delivered season three scripts. The writer's room was recently put on hold and they hear a behind the scenes turmoil ensued this week. There was a disagreement between the sides on creative direction and possible personnel changes leading to the cancellation. Now we talked about how Netflix has these shows and they're supposed to be theirs and it's their decision to cancel them or not. Netflix has also canceled Orange is the New Black and such like that. So I know. I can get rid of that whole thing. It's all crutch words. Netflix has also canceled Orange is the New Black. I know I'm like, okay, I know the second season. Continuing on crutch words. Netflix has also canceled Orange is the New Black. I know the second season of Luke Cage was not as well received as the first. I'm going to take a second here to acknowledge the fact that what I'm doing here is I'm just sculpting the audio. I'm not actually producing this podcast, meaning I'm not taking out segments that I don't believe shouldn't be there. Yes, I've done that in the past, but it's on a very limited basis. If you are rambling on a tangent that has nothing to do with your podcast whatsoever, you might want to consider taking that out. If it's a weak point that is being made about whatever you're talking about, in this case, we're doing a review discussion on an episode of The Punisher. If it's a weak point that turns out to be like, I don't know what she was talking about or SP, post SP, like what were you thinking? I will take that out. More often than not, I will leave my stuff in just because I am way too self-critical and I'll be like, ah, I don't want me saying that out there in the world but it's just a review i mean if it was like a position on a heavily political matter that would be one thing but we don't talk about that intentionally on my shows and that's by agreement of everybody i mean there's no dissension whatsoever i mean lauren haley and, and michelle and legends of shield i'm fine with them talking about um, the things that they talk about but we <laughs> There is a fine line between talking about ideals and talking about specific events and specific people. And we just don't go into that. I don't think it's fair to our listeners because we don't know if our listeners are, in case of politics, let's bring that up, if they are conservative or liberal, if they're Republican or Democrat. And I don't want to um, offend half of my listener base because of a statement none of us on the podcast really do, unless it's really stupid, like Nazis. Okay, that's kind of stupid. But anyway... Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm sculpting the audio. I am not editing for content necessarily. We do a good enough job of that with our show notes and we kind of keep on track on that. I know I talked about show notes last time and at the stereotypical, do you have anything else to say about this? Well, we do follow show notes. We do have points that we cover on the specific topic that we're covering, but we don't actually all the time make sure that we've covered everything that everybody wants to say and in some cases with the preparation that you do for the show watching the episode once twice maybe three times and then writing show notes down you might not think of everything that you do when you're talking back and forth with other people so that's why i put that in there at the end of the segment do you have anything else to say now aside from that we don't go in without any show notes whatsoever we do go in covering certain uh, tidbits as we go along. And Lauren, in particular, does an amazing job. She's an encyclopedia of knowledge on a great many different things. 
and Marvel included in that. And she does a great job of that. And I will acquiesce the fact that both Michelle and Haley know more about Marvel Comics than I do. And those backgrounds are just amazing. I'm more of a steer of the conversation as things go. Anyway, that's a little dialogue there on what I'm doing. I'm not actually switching things around. Maybe I should do more of that. Uh, maybe there is a segment that actually is better fitted earlier or later in the conversation. And what I'm doing is, is more just sculpting the actual spoken word and audio and statements that people are making. Supposed to be theirs and it's their decision to cancel them or not. Netflix has also canceled Orange is the New Black. I know the second season of Luke Cage was not as well received as the first. And perhaps it just didn't draw the numbers as the other ones are. Like the new season of Daredevil. Sounds a little bit like uh, laundry. <clears throat> so um, Haley has laundry that is ongoing. Although it did sound like hammers there. I don't know. Somebody might be hammering in somebody's neighborhood. Perhaps it just didn't draw the numbers as the other ones are. Like the new season. Okay, what I did there, by the way, is I silenced those little bumps by using Control L. That works on every, everybody's version of Audacity. And they did a truncate silence to bring those back in. Perhaps it just didn't draw the numbers as the other ones are. Like the new season of Daredevil, people are just raving about it and talking about it. So I don't think Daredevil's in trouble. But, you know, creative differences, sometimes that will lead to it. Now I know SP is going to go on the... Disney did it because of the streaming service. So SP, go right on ahead. I'm not going to say Disney did it, but I'm going to say Disney probably is not making it profitable for Netflix. They do control Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios is what is actually filming the episodes. Yes, it is a Mar uh, Netflix show, but it's in conjunction with Marvel Studios. So it is a Mar uh, Netflix. Okay. I would love to take... Maybe I can. It is a mar. Uh, a mar no, I can't because I say uh. So if it was after is, I could sculpt that and take it out because you can clearly see that s version in there because the waveforms are so compact, right? That's the s there. It is, and if I would take out a Marvel, then it would be a Netflix show. So I'm gonna have to leave that all in. Yes, it is a mar uh, Netflix show, but it's in conjunction with Marvel Studios. So they might have not have placed their best foot for going to get rid of this. So crutch word, don't need it with Marvel studios. They might have not have placed their best foot. There's a plosive. I heard it and I can see it in the waveform. How I get rid of that is I select it and then I go to effect equalization. I use the base cut and I click. Okay. That leaves the puh without the buh. Explosive part of it. Did not have placed their best foot forward, knowing that the Disney streaming service is coming. Did not. How that plosive happens is I get too close to the microphone and my puff actually makes it through the filter into the microphone capsule. So that's why it's important to uh, experience a, um, experience is not the word I'm looking for. Uh, that, that's why it's important to actually uh, practice there is the word i was looking for practice good microphone technique and for the spoken word with a dynamic cardio microphone what you want to do is place the microphone at about a 90, uh, 45 degree angle so you're not speaking right into the barrel of it you want to kind of graze the microphone capsule top and you want to have a microphone um, pop filter and perhaps even a windscreen maybe both definitely one or the other this is more of at a 30 degree angle and sometimes I get really close as I'm looking at the screen as I'm producing and that puff sound gets in there or my back's hurting so I, I lean forward without remembering to back up. You want to stay about four to six inches away from the microphone. So that's what creates the plosive by saying puh or buh and being so close to the microphone. And to take that out, that is how you do it. You, um, well, there's various different ways. You could actually reduce the amplification of the whole thing. But I found that using the 
Uh, equalization and base cut is the best way to do that. Marvel Studios. They might have not have placed their best foot forward knowing that the Disney streaming service is coming in a few short months and not really want to sink many long-term resources into that. It, it could have been as simple as that and that into that into that. It, it could have been as simple as that. It, it could have been as simple as that. And that could have led to the downfall, the creative downfall of the show. I've been wondering since I heard about the Luke Cage cancellation, or actually I was thinking this after the Iron Fist, that maybe they were going to bring him into Luke Cage and put those two together to do a show. And then after this cancellation, I was wondering if maybe they wanted to launch a new show around those two characters as a team. Yeah, and let's back up a second. We've heard from all... We're going to get rid of the yeah and... I think it's better for the conversation that I just respond to her directly. I was wondering if maybe they wanted to launch a new show around those two characters as a team. Let's back up a second. We've heard from all parties involved that the Defenders probably was likely not to get a season two ever again, which I liked it. And I know a lot of people did. I know a lot of people said they could, could have been done better, but a lot of people did. I know a lot of people said they could could have been done. People said they could have, could have been done. I want to fix that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it. I don't know. A lot of people said they could have, could have been done better. But once Disney announced, <laughs> Haley's laundry again, or whatever that is. To understand that, you got to go back to my first video editing uh, video that I did on uh, this episode. Uh, there was a bunch of knocks like that on Haley's track, and I thought I took most of them out, but apparently they're still there from time to time. They're probably in there as somebody else is speaking, and I just didn't notice it in the video edit. Could have been done better, but... Once Disney announced their streaming service and once we heard that there wasn't going to be a Defender season two, so what's the point of having all these Netflix Marvel universes going on on their own? Yeah, you can transport characters back and forth. I'm not even going to say secondary characters because like, I, w I don't know if I would call Karen Page a secondary character. Characters because like, I, I don't know. Because like I don't know if I would call Karen Page a secondary character. She's a prime character, and she's going back and forth, same as Claire. So I think that the writing was on the wall, and going back and forth, same as Claire. I think that the writing was on the wall, and we're just waiting for the rest of the collapse. Now, I what I don't. Now, I, you might hear me banging on the keyboard from time to time, and that is me frantically trying to hit the space bar, which then stops the actual playback, rest of the collapse. Now, what I don't want to say is that Disney streaming is going to take those two shows, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, and throw them on their streaming service. I don't think that's it. I think what it boils down to is the same that happened with Marvel Comics and that the film rights for the Marvel characters, eventually Marvel, now owned by Disney, they want that back. So they're going to make moves to make that happen. We've already seen it with the comic books for... I think it makes sense that they don't want, in the long run, to have their intellectual property spread out over a bunch of different services. Like, they want to like let what's out there kind of run its course. And then a couple of likes in there. This is unlike Haley, by the way. She hasn't said like this much in quite some time. Spread out over a bunch of different services. Like, they want to, like, let... Like... All right. <clears throat> so, I know a like ends with a hard k sound. So, I'm looking for it on... With my experience, I'm able to know that that's supposed to be in there. So I kind of see it in the waveform right here. I know it's difficult to see, but as I played it back, I found it. Like, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to do a fade in. 
And this is what I was saying not to do several times before, but there's just too many likes here. And I got to get rid of them. Different services. They want to, like, let what's out there kind of... Okay, here's a better version of the like. You can clearly see that K sound right there. Like... have their intellectual property spread out over a bunch of different services. They want to let what's out there kind of run its course and then bring it all in and into the house of the mouse. Into the and This is a good example just to depict the differentiation when she's saying up here. And you can clearly see that it is more of a plosive, more of a big sound going in. It's got more volume to it than the trailing sound. I'm going to use the trailing sound here. And I know in the previous video I said not to do it, but in this particular case, I believe the flow of the conversation is going to outweigh the effect of the edit where the volume is less going into when she's continuing to speak. Normally what happens with a break, by the way, is you hear a breath. I've taken out the breaths just by using a noise gate. So when she says, bring it all in, bring it all in, and then she goes in, it's more of a air explosion right at the beginning. So it's a bigger, fuller volume. And without hearing the breath, it's a little bit easier for the ear to realize she knew just be pausing in between without taking a breath. But at some point in time, you got to breathe. You take a look at all of this. You don't really see any breaths. And that's why, because I've used the noise gate. Run its course and then bring it all in into the house of the mouse and have it all completely under their control and all in one place. Right. So again, I'm not saying that Disney called for the cancellation of these shows. Netflix obviously did. What I'm saying is Disney probably did some things. Right. So again, I'm not. If I just start with again here, I'm going to sound like I'm countering and not agreeing. So I'm going to leave that right in. Might take out that. Under their control and all in one place. Right. Again, I'm not saying that. Yep. Taking out the so is definitely a good way to go. Control and all in one place. Right. Again, I'm not saying that Disney called for the cancellation of these shows. Netflix obviously did. What I'm saying is. Disney probably did some things behind the scenes to not make it as lucrative as it might have been. I wonder what that means for Hulu and the Runaways. Well, I think ABC is the Disney is the biggest owner of ABC is the Disney is the biggest owner. ABC is the All right. There's a bunch of things I would like to do here. I'd like to take out her well, but I think it works well with the conversation. And then her change from ABC to Disney. ABC is the Disney is the. I think ABC. Maybe I can. Well, I think Disney is the biggest owner of Hulu at this point, especially after the Fox acquisition, right? Fox acquisition. Fox acquisition. The Fox acquisition, right? Oh, yeah. ABC or Disney. I don't know who's going to end up owning what, but yeah, basically, yeah. Oh, that's right, because we thought Hulu might be the Disney streaming service, but it's not. Yeah. It's an actual separate thing, which I'm not going to pay for. Are either of you going to pay for it? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I don't want to. I'll tell you that much. I really don't want to. If it's low, I like I got a deal that was emailed to me like Hulu five ninety nine for a year. That's actually enticing for me. Now, remember, I only I pay cable and then I pay for two streaming services, which is Amazon Prime. And then I pay for two streaming services. Then I pay for two streaming services, which is Amazon Prime and Netflix. And because I have cable, I don't want to really pay for other streaming services. So I don't have Hulu. But when that five ninety nine deal came hmm, a little close of there. Equalization, use the base cut again, boom, golden.
have Hulu, but when that five ninety nine have Hulu, but when that but when, but when, that just didn't sound right. Hulu, but when that five that didn't sound right either. Yeah, I wonder if I this might be a case where I amplify it down. We'll take it down minus nine, which is basically order of magnitude three times because every 3 dB is an order of magnitude. Think of it like 3 dB equals to 10. I have Hulu, but when that 599... Let's try 12. Heck, let's try 15. See if we can get rid of both those artifacts. So I don't have Hulu, but when that 599... Ah. This is just not going to sound good, whatever I do. Minus 6. Let's just leave it at that. So I don't have Hulu. But when that 599 deal came and it was for a year, I was like, you know, maybe my, for 599 for maybe my, for 599 delete that. You know, maybe for 599 for Hulu, but then I thought of all the stuff that Hulu doesn't have anymore. I'm like, well, it's probably only worth I'm like, well, it's probably only worth 599. Like, well, it's probably only worth 5 It's probably only it's probably probably only worth five ninety nine of my money because they don't have the CBS All Access stuff and everything else on there anymore. So I don't know. I'm not planning on paying for it. I was in the same boat. Like Hulu is almost what. Yeah. Same boat. Like Hulu is almost what I want. There's an example of what an H should sound like going into a word. Who Although there was, uh, Hulu is almost what I want, but there's enough shows that they don't have. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know exactly, like, it's going to go on Hulu the next day, but you don't know when the next day, like, it could happen in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, and then it's there when you wake up. Next day, but you don't know when the next day it could happen in the middle of the night while you're sleeping and then it's there when you wake up or it could be the middle of the day the next day you don't know when it's going to arrive also like there's a lot of content that they don't have which is why i like the there's a lot of content that they don't have which is why i ended up at playstation view for a long time and then i'm over to direct and then i'm over to direct for a long time uh, and then i'm over to direct tv now so you, you're gonna have to give me a lot of bang for my buck with this new disney streaming service to playstation view for a long time uh, and then i'm over to direct tv now so you, you're gonna have to give me a lot of bang for my buck with this new disney streaming service to make it worth it for me i've got amazon prime but i've got that more for the amazon part than the streaming services Hold on a second. I gotta send a message. Yeah. Make it worth it for me. I've got Amazon Prime, but I've got that more for the Amazon part than the streaming services and Netflix. Disney's gonna have a lot of Prime content on their streaming service. Make no bones about it. They actually have created quite the empire between Marvel and Star Wars and the traditional Disney stuff, and they've got ABC stuff. So when you combine it all, it's almost looks like it's going to be worth it, but I have to see on what's available there versus what's available on my other yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's going to be what kind of exclusive content do they have. And if if they're making new Marvel television shows over there or new Star Wars television shows, like, you know, exclusive content there, maybe. But if it's just like, oh, here's our back catalog of movies and stuff, I own the movies that I want to watch already. At least for now, in the future, then it'll all be going over there. Now, new con new Star Wars content. I mean, there's several different series in development. Resistance just started airing. I took a look at it, and I will watch it because I can, because I have Disney now through my cable subscription. It's being aired on my Disney channel. But if I didn't have that, I don't know if I'd go out, because it's not the amazing Clone Wars. It's not what Rebels turned out to be. So if you take shows like that and put it on Disney streaming service. I'm not sure that that's going to entice me, but if you put other good stuff on there, that's going to be something else altogether. So it really depends on what their programming slate looks like. Definitely.
Well, the last bit of news this week is that we're finally getting a look at Tom Holland's new Spider-Man costume. It was really cute on October 18th on Jimmy Kimmel Live. His, um, like, uh, co-host... Bunch of crutch words, delete. Live. His co-host or sidekick, um, Guillermo, came out. Um, sidekick. Guillermo came out wearing the Spider-Man mask going pew, 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 with his hands, like, you know, pretending to throw out, you know, spider webs. And then all of a sudden Tom Holland comes out, you know, spider webs. You know, spider. Okay, here's an example. I have not done one of these yet that I know of, but I'm going to be able to get rid of the, you know, because I can clearly tell where that S sound starts. Gonna delete that. I'm gonna fade in with the S. And boom, we have ourselves a you know that was able to be taken out. To throw out spider webs. And then all of a sudden Tom Holland comes out, you know, in, in like the Spider Man costume, wearing a cone over his head, trying to chase him around. And then, you know, finally he takes it off and everyone's like, Woo, it's Tom Holland in the suit. And it's it's an interesting suit. It's it's an interesting suit. Suit, and it's it's an interesting suit, and it's an interesting suit. It's darker um, than the one from Homecoming. It looks pretty good. I guess the big question is, how does he get from Thanos to this movie? I know that was brought up and and Tom Holland's just like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think Tom Holland said I I, so I'm gonna take that out from the show. And Tom Holland's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. In fact, I think Thanos is robbing a bank. So I have to go take care of that. <laughs> they probably haven't told him because they don't want him to reveal it. That's it's probably true. I've heard that it's supposed to take Maybe, I don't remember. I think I heard rumors that it's supposed to take place before the events of mm -hmm. Infinity War. Kind of like an Ant-Man and the Wasp sort of time frame. Maybe, who knows. But doesn't the movie come out after Avengers 4? Yeah, way after, isn't it? 2020? Okay, who knows? I don't know then. Maybe that's what they told Tom Holland. <laughs> what, yeah, but it really frame? comes out next week. Yeah. Right. And it's a surprise to him because he has no clue. They just, you know. Who knows with him? So no clue. They just who knows with him. So he filmed the movie and didn't realize it. Yeah, that's probably what happened. They're like, no, this is promo material. Yeah. <laughs> Here, read these lines. Why for? They're just practice, Tom. It's just practice. With Kevin Feige involved, it was a a really good movie, and I'm. Was a, a was a I think I can do this. I deleted the kind of the stutter there. Oh, that fade out. And I was able to clip it after the S sound, but we'll see what it sounds like. Sometimes it doesn't work. Involved, it was. A really good movie and i'm looking forward to this movie as well it's just really weird because it is part of the mcu but it's not part of the mcu so it's like i don't know what to think about it it is part of the mcu yeah it is it's the venom movie that's not part of the mcu what's the venom movie i haven't seen it yet I haven't either i have no desire to i still haven't seen ant-man and the wasp guys it's real bad oh that's out now on blu-ray i know i know it is i'm probably going to end up buying the blu-ray before i actually see it well, sure. Why not? I, there's lots of special effects there and everything. I mean, it's a good, fun watch. All you have to do is find a couple of hours, watch it. Oh, let me just uh, carve that out on my schedule. Yeah, kind of figure. All right. Well, that's it for the news discussion this week. And that's it for all of our discussion this week. And we are going to politely take our chairs and roll this one out. Politely. I did say politely. All right, going to add in the bump again. 
what I do is I'm going to the template. I don't actually use the template to produce. I just use it to identify where the bumps are so I can copy and paste them into the active project that I'm working. This was uh, the end of the news. Normally I would go with our end of news bump. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm, since we're transitioning, in this particular case, we're transitioning to the outro. I'm gonna use the end of the feedback because this was the old one, by the way. This is the new one. I'm gonna use the new one. I use the old one when we're talking about MCU stuff. Again, a little differentiation between the productions. And I do plan at some point in time to getting into Pond 5 or wherever, Audio Jungle, and choosing some new bumps to kind of refresh the show a little bit. This is the outro. That's got to be nothing, so I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to uh, select this whole thing. I'm going to use Truncate Silence. I'm going to bring it down. Let's undo that. It's 2 minutes, 13 seconds. And I've now condensed that entire thing down to 1 minute, 2 seconds. I don't know if that's how much time I'm really saving here because you saw all that silence out there. On the right. Okay, that brings it in. I'm going to take the time sync off. In this particular case, I like to talk right when this bump ends because it ends abruptly. So I'm going to slide that in and crossfade it, basically. Thanks to everybody. Oops, I can make that a little closer. Thanks to everybody that has been tweeting back at us for some great feedback and discussions back and forth on different things. And thanks to Born to Eat Bacon, I received my new bands. So this is the Daredevil mm -hmm. one. I'll be wearing it when we actually podcast on Daredevil, but got a few others there. So might be a little uh, plus of P there. Definitely. All right, effect, um, equalize, take the bass out, actually podcast on Daredevil. All right, that's how I get rid of the plosives, is I use the bass cut on the equalization when we actually podcast on Daredevil, but got a few others there, so thank you very much to our fans. Yeah, thank you to everybody that's listened along over the long hiatus that is nowhere near its end. We appreciate everybody that's hanging around with us, everybody that's watched ahead in the Netflix shows to let us know that we've got good stuff to look forward to, and I can't wait till we get to watch it. Yeah, thank you to everyone who listens and interacts with us. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to Agent Lauren coming back next week. Until next time, I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. I heard something. Huh. Until next time, I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Consultant Michelle. See y'all next time. Bye. 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 All right. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the outro music. I'm going to do that by creating two new tracks. I do that by hitting Control Shift N. Boom, boom. That might be a shortcut that you need to set up with future versions of Audacity. It came with this version of Audacity. I'm going to move this to the bottom because I want to line up the tracks right there. You're going to see what I'm talking about in a second. So I'm going to go over to the uh, bump template. I'm going to select this entire outro. It's where the outro beeps come from the um, for the outtakes or the post credit scenes, whatever you want to talk about. I am going to take the time sync off because I'm going to be moving this and I don't want to be moving any other track with it. And selecting the time shift tool and grabbing it and moving it to the left. And right there, 
when this starts ramping up. There's a final like hit, and I'm gonna play it in a second here, so you're gonna hear it. I think it happens right after there. So I try to line up the end of the last voice with that hit. And let's see if I did a good job of that. Bye. Bye. Maybe a little bit to the left. Bye. Thank you for listening. All right. Now here's what the whole thing sounds like with the music ramping up. Good stuff to look forward to. And I can't wait till we get to watch it. Yeah, thank you to everyone who listens and interacts with us. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to Agent Lauren coming back next week. Until next time, I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Consultant Michelle. See you all next time. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. For those of you wondering how I do the beeps, here's what they sound like. How to create it. I will go into generate generate uh, tone I believe this is a thousand could be 800 and then i think i'm at point four no, i'm at point two generate silence no, tone point two Okay, so that's how it's done here. I could do the same thing by just selecting one. I'm going to go all the way to the end so I don't screw up the tracks anymore. Generate tone. Uh, it's at point 0.2. If I did point 0.4, that's the same thing as two point twos. So if you want to do it on a mono track, that's how you do it. I choose both tracks here, not because I'm doing it in stereo, because I know all the time I'm going to have two tracks for the outro, I'm going to have the music, and I'm going to have the voiceover over it, so I just created it. So I know to copy both tracks over all the way through. But, I mean, you can do that point, point four. So that's the sound, and you're like, well, that's not what it looks like. There's some space on both sides of that. Yep, there sure is. How I do that is we'll go in and we'll select just the left. I'll generate silence, 0.5 seconds of silence. Boom. Go to the right. Generate 0.5 seconds of silence. Boom. Just so happens that 0.5 was what I used. And then I click there and there, thus joining the track together. And that's why I get the beep. That's how I generated it. So there's your inside behind the secret there. What I do is now that I know this is all set up and I know I have several outtakes is I'll go ahead and select near the end here. I'll go to the time shift tool. I'll make sure that that sync lock is on. I'll move that over. And then when I copy and paste the outtake in, I'll put it right there, slide it over, slide the next one over. So on and so forth until I get to the end. Sometimes I have to actually duplicate some of the beeps because I have so many outtakes. Uh, I just recently like doubled it, but sometimes I have so many outtakes that I'll have to put in even more after doubling it. And then the end, last two things. Legends of Shield is copyright twenty eight. And then the uh, the busy sound. There you go. That is how it's all edited and done. As you can see, it's multi-tracked all the way down.
I've shown you how to create new tracks, I've shown you how to insert new audio into those tracks, I've shown you how I've edited, so I've shown you how I have um, blended in the sounds and crossfaded in and out, and I've shown you how to do the end. So if you have any additional questions on editing, please let me know at Stargate Pioneer on Twitter, or you can email me Stargate Pioneer at gunnageek.com. And I'll try to do more of these in the future. This was a really easy one since it was literally an easy 37 second or minute long podcast originally. That's an interesting thing. So let's go to the end here. And I know there will be a little bit differentiation because the bump, bump, bump is not going to be on the end. But at the end here, I'm at 35 minutes, one second. Let's go over to the video edit. Let's go to the end. And I'm at 38 minutes, 17 seconds. So effectively... I've taken out five minutes, 15 seconds out of roughly more than a half hour show because of truncate silence, getting rid of crutch words, crutch phrases, and making sure that everything was crossfaded exactly on time. That's five minutes, 15 seconds of my listeners' time that I'm giving back to them and they don't have to worry about it. And I think that's the conscious thing to do, especially if you're producing a podcast with hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of listeners. If you happen to be lucky enough to have a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners, if you're able to save them five minutes each, that's 50,000 minutes that you are saving of human productivity or entertainment time, whatever you want to call it. And I think that's worthy of something, even if it's a hundred listeners at five minutes a pop, that's 500 minutes. That's a little under 10 hours nine, eight, nine hours, something like that. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, that means something for human productivity or enjoyment factor. Uh, anyway, there you go. If you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me, and I will catch you all later. Bye. Thanks for watching.